So that was post fun, and we're back with my second of three interviews today. So uh, I'll mention you guys too because you probably didn't hear from the last interview. Uh, this is my 100th episode that I've recorded between two different podcasts that I've been doing. So nice. it's a it's a special moment for me, if not for the podcast itself. Congrats. So thank you for uh, being my guest. Thanks for having us. Thank you, thank you. So uh, today we have family man here from Montreal. Correct. So, I'll go through introductions of you individually, but the number one question that I had when I knew I was going to get in and talk to you guys is, what brought you here? We are East Coast DNA, and uh, I usually host a bi-weekly episode with my brother. It's Darcy and Andrew. That's where the DNA comes from. Okay. So, I do tend to look over to Montreal every once in a while there's some uh, I don't know French myself but there's some bilingual bands that I listen to as well so I, I like that but we don't normally go too far we we have had some Ontario people that are Ontario artists but they're originally from here so it still ties in with the DNA but yeah what's bringing you guys to the east coast and do you have any special connections here aside from you want this? performance can you hear me good yeah yeah perfect so um, it's pretty well documented and well understood. Uh, I'm the best drummer in Montreal, oh, okay. um, the undis- undisputed, undefeated drumming uh, heavyweight champion. Um, got a couple titles, a uh, couple tourney wins, and uh, you know uh, we've played with AT and Jax before. And uh, Connor, the drummer, great guy, very talented musician. But on the last post that I made, he came at me. He tried to challenge me for my title. Um, which makes no sense because he's not even from Montreal, but I mean, whatever. So he, when uh, they sent us the invite, I said, all right, well, we're definitely taking it up. And uh, I'm not just going to be the best drummer in Montreal. I'm also going to be the best drummer in Nova Scotia after I uh, wash the floors with him tonight. Love him, though. So did you happen to have a drum off or anything at your performance last night? Oh, it, it's happening tonight. Awesome. Awesome. We, we, we love Connor, though. Connor's great. And is that fantastic. Is that getting into the intro? Is that because you're also a Connor? Is it a Connor oh, I was purely talking about myself. There. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we love Connor Booth. He's a great lad. He's been hosting us here. Been nothing but lovely. Uh, but music, music is a sport. It's a competition, you know, and we're, uh, we're playing it. So maybe we'll do a little introduction to who each member of the band is. So we'll start with you, Connor. Yeah, I'm Connor. Uh, play guitar and vocals for Family Man. Uh, met all these guys here er, well not here but I met all these guys in Montreal mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, we, we we are out here now besides the the drumming competition uh, we're out here now because we played with Ate and Jax uh, at uh, North by Northeast okay. last year had a great time with them uh, we invited them out to Montreal they came to play and we said it's our turn you guys gotta have us out there now so awesome. uh, so we're out here now it's a great but time that's what I love to see because there's a lot of bands that are playing around here yeah. that they don't get a lot of exposure outside of the east coast Yeah. so it's great to see them making contacts and then bringing those bands here as well because it's healthy for everybody to be spreading the love all around the Absolutely. country so that Absolutely. we can have national bands instead of regional bands exactly it's so exactly. really exciting yeah, we're we're trying to take everybody to the nationals. That's 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 what it is. Perfect. Nationals. Uh, but yeah, so I'm Connor. That's me. That's awesome. Hi, I'm Josh. I play bass. I'm Honkin Henry, rhythm guitar. Uh, sometimes latex puppy when I feel like it. As I previously mentioned, I am uh, Brian. A.K.A. Drummer Boy Brian, A.K.A. Young Fresh, A.K.A. Swizz Beats the Drums, um, A.K.A. The Best Drummer in Montreal, A.K.A. The Soon-to-Be Best Drummer in Nova Scotia. I also sing sometimes. So, when I was researching you guys before I came in today, I'd see you had a single out in 2020. Yeah. And then an album in 2022. So, with this the original single, the same lineup that we're looking at here today? No. Uh, so we actually uh, it was it wasn't a full album in 2022. It was, it was more of an EP. Um, but we've we've gone through a couple different iterations of the band. Uh, 
initially we had our, our, our it was just Brian, myself, and uh, another bassist uh, named Griffin. Um, and uh, we all loved each other, but Griffin decided to move to Australia. Uh, so, uh, but Brian and I wanted to keep the band going. And then we found, uh, found another person who ended up bringing Nick into the band. Um, and then, uh, then we had to part ways with that other person. And now we've got Josh. Uh, and that's that's what we're doing here. So we've uh, we put that single out in 2020. Put a obviously the big the big C word hit, mm -hmm. and uh, and we weren't able to do as much in 2021 as we had hoped for. But then we ended up putting that EP out in 2022, and now we're set to release a whole whole bunch of music in uh, in 2023, which we're very excited about. Very new sound, a uh, different sound from what we have done previously. Too. It, so. it sounds like. I mean, it's hard to tell from one song jump into an EP, and there's multiple songs to pick from, but it sounds like you might be getting a little of a heavier sound. I know that you have some, in the bio, it says that you have some punk roots. Yes. So some yeah. of that's sprouting up a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. We all come from, from very heavy backgrounds. Um, Brian, Brian was in a, uh, well, Brian was like in a couple hardcore bands back in the day. I, uh... I was in a couple emo screamo bands. Josh and Nick were in a bunch of metal bands, and then we'd always uh, we'd always dialed it down a bit for for what we had done before. And while we loved the music for what it was, uh, just we we didn't feel quite true to to what we were doing as as we progressed. Mm -hmm. um, and so we said, you know what, we're gonna we're just gonna do what we want. And I I, I think you'll hear tonight we've definitely taken a a pretty hard turn towards. Uh, towards some more noisy, energetic, chaotic, violent-sounding stuff. And influences for the sound that you do have, aside from the different genres that you're in, like, what's the influence that brings you into that more of a... I think you called it post-indie in uh, your Facebook account, I think. That, which I liked that. That needs to be updated. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, where does that kind of indie rock influence come from? for a bunch of people that are typically coming from heavier bands. Yeah. Uh, well, it came from uh, the fact that we all do love uh, all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. Like, we rarely, anytime, anytime any one of us is playing music, we rarely, uh, we rarely play one of the same genres uh, in any given song. Um, but... Uh, moving forward, we are like like we said, we are moving back towards towards some more heavier stuff. And it's less post indie and, mm -hmm. and more noise and and punk adjacent. So uh, so that's and it, obviously that we're harkening back to to where we come from from that. And then also uh, we're a bunch of uh, angry lads, uh, and we got we got stuff we want to say. So uh, so we feel like this is the way we want to say it best. And uh, yeah, well, what I've listened to fits really well in with like the Halif Halifax scene like Post Fun and actually Sleepy Kicks were on with uh, Post Fun on our previous episode like, like all those bands have that same kind of vibe that you guys have I know there's a few uh, Prince Edward Island bands that I've been checking out recently that have that same kind of sound so it's I guess it's a Canadian sound that we're starting to develop. <laughs> I like it I like it. And so in Montreal is it, I, this is a question for me because of a little bit of ignorance where I focus mostly on East Coast. So where it's a French province, do you guys have a hard time as an English band or do you, like I know of other English bands from Montreal, but when I think of Quebec, I think of French bands typically. So yeah, is that a struggle for you guys? at that level music knows no borders music has no language but in regards to that we're bilingual we're bisexual and we're ambidextrous so you either like us or you don't and if you don't there's the door perfect we love our french fans and the french scene out in montreal uh but uh they're definitely we're excited to go explore other parts of canada as well with the english side of things there actually is a growing number of bands that I'm seeing from our region that are French or bilingual bands as well. Yeah, so we've, we've heard there's a lot of Acadian Acadian yeah. communities out here and, and French speakers out, out east here. And yeah, it's wonderful It's to cool see, to see so them coming up. 
Yeah, no, I think uh, it'll work well for trying to get the country to start sharing bands back and forth yeah. and give people more revenue opportunities because you can rip a little further across the there country. is there is a really um there is a really harsh i, I don't know I, I think being an english band in in montreal you you do see it's very present like apparent to see that there is a harsh divide between like what um what english bands can do in a french speaking and it's it's Obviously, if you're a French speaker, mm -hmm. you're going to connect more with French music and vice versa. Um, but there's so much to be shared, so much to be listened to, so much to be learned. And I do see it crossing over quite a bit more. A lot of my English speaking friends listen are listening to more and more French music. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of my French speaking friends and people that I know have always listened to a lot of English music because there's a lot of it <laughs> uh, and a lot of it coming out of Canada. But uh, there does seem to be a bit more... Uh, sharing of uh of music across the languages are you guys familiar with the band grim skunk sorry grim skunk yeah of sure? course yeah. we we are we are on the label that they started actually okay. yeah that's yeah. awesome because yeah. th that is a band that in their early days they were featured on much music this dates me a little bit that's <laughs> And yeah, their uh, Silverhead maybe. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would have been their music video that was on like heavy rotation for a while. Yeah. So I followed them for years. Had yeah. stacks of CDs and cassettes yeah. at home. I, I think I have their first EP and no, stuff. So they're they're awesome. They're great. Franz is uh, Franz is one of the guys who runs mm -hmm. the label, and he's one of the singers in Grimskunk and yep. the guitarist. And uh, really fun dudes. We actually just recorded some music with uh, with Peter Edwards, who's the guitarist in Grimskunk as well. Um, so it really great guys and yeah they definitely they ran the bilingual stuff for a while there for sure yeah that would be probably my early touch point to non-radio music maybe yeah. that i was listening to that yeah. was coming out of that region so i did actually they did come to halifax which would date me as well because it's probably been longer ago than <laughs> i think it was but yeah they played up on uh, Citadel hill not far from no there, way so, yeah. very cool very yeah, it cool. was a music festival there one year very cool so when you came down, was it just last night was your first show down here? Yes. Yeah. And then tonight is your second one. Yeah, so last night was the semifinal, tonight is the final. And we're then are you it. back to Montreal or are you doing anything? Yeah, we're, we're heading back to Montreal tomorrow. Another 14-hour another long drive. I just want to shout out the uh, Frankenstein Brewery. That's where we played. Yes. Uh, we were warmly welcomed. Uh, the beer was great and we had a great time. Yeah, they were awesome to me. I was only there once for a visit. Uh, another person that's been on a couple times on this podcast uh andre pedipa from andre pedipa and the giants they had a beer that was made out there nice so nice uh, they, they hooked me up with some extra labels and stuff so i i made, cool. s I made some fake stuff with some props in the background of some of the episodes that nice. don't actually exist anywhere other than my <laughs> apartment so it's pretty cool yeah i super appreciate it and they're really nice people out there ah, they're super sweet the, all the their, their whole the, the even the stamps we got on our hand they get furked up yeah hilarious and then uh and got all the free beer we wanted couldn't ask for more couldn't ask for more and did you guys get much time to spend in halifax since you've been here uh so we actually <coughs> you know as as you might assume uh, despite us being uh, championship winners uh in music um <laughs> we music, traveling around for this is can get quite expensive yeah um so we've actually been graciously accepted uh by our opponents um to come stay at their their house uh connor booth put us up in lunenburg uh awesome. or uh, lunenburg lunenburg i'm yep. not sure if I, okay you got it I'm trying to pronounce it properly here uh but uh what a cute little town we spent uh, we spent the day out there yesterday spent today in halifax absolutely gorgeous city uh and we spent uh a bit of i guess it would have been well yeah i guess it would have been yesterday morning in Halifax as well too it was pretty nice pretty gorgeous shout out big ups to tracy and david family man loves nova scotian moms awesome. yes tracy thank you very much and so another question i had about the ep itself yeah uh more so than your original single maybe uh for lyrics are you the lyricist as well um for the for the ep that traded off and actually brian for example saying should have known better on that ep and uh we we kind of all uh, and and uh, and uh, parts of bakery moon like we we trade back and forth a lot there um it's a very collaborative writing process for 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 all of it and the, the new music as well generally how it works is that 
one of us comes forward with an idea, uh, sometimes fully fleshed out, sometimes just a just a little portion of it. Um, but then we make the we make the the gameplay around it essentially, uh, finish it up, and then we uh, then we put it out into the court, um, and uh, and that's how the song comes to fruition there. But yeah, basically everybody gets their chance to rip apart everybody else's idea uh, to make it as 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 good as we possibly can. And the darker content behind some of the lyrics mm-hmm. or like some of the melancholy behind it, is those rooted in true stories or are these like yeah. <laughs> maybe influenced by some? So I took the L. I took the L uh, with my ex and that was where <laughs> that was where the EP, uh, a lot of the inspiration with the EP came okay. from. Um, but writing that, uh, ri- you know, I, I did end up writing a, a fair amount of the lyrics for that, uh, but Brian, for example, um, t- uh, like put himself in my shoes uh, and wrote a bunch of the lyrics on it as well. Um, but altogether, writing that EP was a was a this is cliche, but it was a cathartic experience. Yeah. All right, you get up and over the hump, and then you're done with it. Uh, but uh, well, I guess Brian has something to say, so. We lost once and we never will again. Exactly. Um, exactly. But, uh, yeah, th- once we did finish writing that, once we put it out, um, we felt like we wanted to move on to, to deeper things, uh, to deeper issues. Not that breakups aren't deep, mm-hmm. um, but we became a lot more introspective um, and uh, uh, as well as... a as well as observant of, of our intrapersonal relationships. Um, and that's what a lot of this, this new album is about. Uh, and that's slated to come out later this year. We've got a, we've got a new single coming out on April 21st. Oh, perfect. Uh, which is very, uh, we're very excited about that. We're also playing club soda that day in Montreal. Cool. Uh, not East coast. We, we are absolutely going to come back here. We, we have loved every minute of it. Everyone's been fantastic. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's coming out in twenty first. Got a couple of the singles coming out, and uh, then an EP, and then an album later on in the year. But uh, yeah. so for people that are just finding out about you now from this episode, where's the best place to follow you guys online? Uh, find us on Instagram at Family Man. Is it underscore music? Family Man underscore music. Family Man underscore music. Thank you. Scorekeeper had me covered there. Awesome. Um, yeah, Family Man underscore music on Instagram. Give us a follow. Give us a like. We promise we're funny and, and a little bit stupid, too. But uh, it's entertaining. And then a Spotify as well. We're all over Spotify. All over any of your DSPs, anywhere you might listen to music online. TikTok. TikTok. We got the TikTok, too. Um, Family Man music. Family Man music. There's, there's, yeah, we're, we're everywhere you can find us. We're yeah, everywhere. We'll put MySpace. Some We'll put some links in the show notes. Beautiful. And uh, as we exit this and await Ate and Jax, I'm going to insert a song from your performance tonight, too. Amazing. So. Very exciting. All right. Thanks, everyone. And Thank you, Jersey. Uh, can't wait to hear the new single as well, and I'm excited to see the performance tonight. Amazing. Oh, I guess. Woof. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks. Now... For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Uh, let's get ready to rumble!
so long to your flesh is mind I'm so far it always goes my way Stuff your mouth with concrete, it's hard to do it Thank you. 